China's new Silk Road, Beijing's multi-billion dollar Belt and Road Initiative extending right into Europe. This uh, first section from New Belgrade to Staropozova and third section from uh, Novisad to Superdita are all constructed by uh, China Railway. China aims to get its goods across Europe by train, and southeastern and eastern European nations are vital to that strategy. They'll enable the transportation of goods to Western Europe via a single rail corridor. For southeastern Europe in particular, the new Silk Road project beckons with promises of new investment. For us, the Chinese have come like a gift from heaven. But China brings more than cutting-edge technology. It's also prepared to invest in older, environmentally harmful processes. Cancer is a really horrible disease. All of us know what we're in for. It's a region torn between its loyalty to Europe and the opportunities that China offers. It would be easy to convince our politicians not to get funds from the Chinese for such projects if there was a serious attempt of Europe to help us in the transition towards decarbonization. children's model toy railway. Welcome to the exhibition room for the project of uh, Hungarian and uh, Serbian high-speed railway uh, in the territory of uh, Serbia. Please follow me. Yu Hui is an engineer overseeing the Belgrade to Budapest route. At the China Railway headquarters, visitors are shown Serbia's showcase model. The Beijing-based engineer has traveled practically all over the world for the new Silk Road project. For me, actually, uh, there's no such kind of challenge because I was doing a lot of international projects, not only in Pakistan. Uh, I was in, uh, in Egypt and I was in Iran. I was in uh, Argentina. Political questions are off the table. We're only permitted to ask about the technical side of the project the Chinese government vets all communication. The aim, to tell a success story. China can build rail routes everywhere, including in Europe. From engineers' perspective, this is not a difficult thing. It is a reconstruction project. It is a reconstruction project. So uh, we have a lot of experiences on that. So when this railway line is completed, the travel time from uh, a New Belgrade station to uh, Budapest will be shortened into uh, three hours. In recent years, Serbia has blossomed into China's most favored Balkan partner. Beijing has granted 10 billion euros worth of loans to Serbia, more than to any other country in the region. But the new Silk Road project has created hardly any jobs here. Even the construction is largely being done by a Chinese workforce. That's been a typical feature of the Belt and Road Initiative. China imports its own builders, stationing them in the host country for months at a time, just as now in Serbia. Investment from China began flowing as early as 2011 when a Chinese consortium built the Pupin Bridge across the Danube at a cost of 175 million euros. It became the symbol of Sino-Serbian friendship. Most Serbs view the flow of cash from China as a good thing, even if the money is only borrowed. The loans from Chinese state banks are quick and cheap, the construction projects are headed and carried out by Chinese firms, with even materials and machines made in China. 
Serbia's Chamber of Commerce says it's still a good deal. We need railways. <laughs> we need good modern railways where we can not only have a passenger trains, but also good cargo uh, potential. And uh, uh, this is it. This is, you know, there is no uh, you know, hidden agenda with railways. But Marco Shadesh is also aware that Beijing's chief aim with the rail network is to get goods from China to consumers in the West. China's uh, initiative is uh, uh, especially good in, 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 in Serbia, but it's about infrastructure, it's about how fast you are able to really proceed with the projects. These are all complicated projects. And for China, Serbia is part of their initiative. Serbia is geographically there where it is, and uh, as such, it is important, uh, uh, I think the most important uh, 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 aspect of this relation is that we are on the way from China logistically to the biggest, let's say, market of 500 million people in the EU. Serbia's friendship with China is a much celebrated one. Xi Jinping and other high-ranking Chinese officials are popular guests in Serbia, as evident during this state visit to Belgrade in 2016. Serbia holds an important strategic position with a visible regional advantage, and it will surely play an important role in this. This is a big day for all of Serbia, for all its citizens. Over the past decade, Chinese money has flowed into highways, bridges, and security technology. A Serbian copper mine and a steelworks have also received Chinese funding. Now, the next project is on the table, Belgrade's metro system and the Chinese want to build it. Serbian opposition politician Maranika Tepic is critical of the plans. She says there were no public tenders and believes corruption is involved. What alerted us was the drastic difference in estimated cost for building the Belgrade subway. In the initial contract with the French firm almost 10 years ago, the quoted cost was 2.2 billion euros. Then, President Aleksandr Vucic suddenly turned up with a Chinese partner, and the cost had doubled. Now they've said it will cost 4.4 billion euros. Tepic is a tireless critic of the close ties between Serbia and China. She says that the backroom deals often come with strings attached, and there's little transparency. And Belgrade's cozying up to China is a strategic mistake. Serbia's natural ally, she says, is Europe. I'm sure that no one here has a problem with foreign investment. But we do have a problem when the dealings are corrupt, when far more money is spent than should be, when we have no idea of how that money is being spent. The Chinese firms are all being handled with kid gloves because they're protected under a bilateral two-state agreement. You can't even get into their factories. The Serbian government prefers not to comment on the matter. It seems content to close ranks with China, especially when there's chance of a photo op. In 2019, Chinese police officers took to the streets of central Belgrade to go on patrol with their Serbian counterparts. Ostensibly meant as a nod to the growing number of Chinese visitors to the country, it also sent a signal China is looking out for the security of its smaller ally, Serbia. That same year, thousands of surveillance cameras suddenly turned up in central Belgrade. They'd been supplied by the Chinese telecoms giant Huawei under an initiative to make the city safe for its 1.3 million residents. Being 
being observed all the time and not being able to be at least authentic. That's something that is affecting a personal self-development. And, and needless to say, it also affects one's dignity. Since the cameras were installed, activists like Navena Rusic have been trying to find out more about the deal with China. But Belgrade remains silent for reasons of security, it says. You see the one, the round one, this is like, uh, like a bowl? This, this can go around and it's used for counting play, uh, objects, including people, uh, and also for facial recognition. They all have facial recognition technology embedded. The cameras were installed practically overnight and without any statistical evidence of a rise in crime. Navena Ruzic is skeptical. What is missing in the whole timeline of, uh, of uh, those hundreds, thousands of cameras is actually a public debate. A debate on why we need it, why the security sector th is of the opinion that we really need it, and what is the counter argument. So, so we never debated. We, uh, th there was no deliberation in the parliament or in the public or amongst the experts, or at least um, uh, accessible to the public to understand why, why we need it. The surveillance technology is just one part of Serbia's cooperation with Huawei. The telecoms giant plans to open a regional innovation center in Belgrade, aimed at promoting digitalization in the finance, education, and energy sectors. China is one of those, uh, those countries. They, they uh, do not recognize privacy as a core human, human right, and the, the comprehension of the right of, of privacy itself is not the same. So for that reason, this is, this is always a questionable whether, whether we, we share information of such sensitive nature with, uh, with uh, such companies, needless to say, transborder data flows. We asked the Serbian police for an interview and got no reply. However, they did tell the activist group that the facial recognition function was not in use. Navena Rusic and her group have mapped more than 1,000 cameras. These are the ones we usually put around. The aim is to alert people to the presence of the cameras. And although data privacy isn't a hot button issue here, it could hinder Serbia's attempts to join the EU if the cameras are found to violate data protection laws. So, just why is the friendship between Serbia and China held in such high esteem? Pro-government journalist Milo Mirmaric has a talk show covering national and international issues, among them China. And his view of the EU is increasingly critical. I belong to the generation that dreamt the American dream. As a young man, I dreamed of joining the European Union, but I doubt I'll see it happen in my lifetime. Serbia's been in accession talks with the EU since 2014, but its ambitions of joining the bloc are still just distant. According to the talk show host, this disillusionment has spurred the government to look around for other partners. The Chinese have built us the bridges and roads that the Europeans weren't interested in. For us, the Chinese have come like a gift from heaven. They gave us loans, but also did most of the work. And while the EU keeps up its demands for a host of reforms, China's loans come with no strings attached. Its message democracy isn't a prerequisite for economic growth. China invests much more in many other European countries and NATO members than Serbia. Chinese goods are coming in via ports in the north, Duisburg, Hamburg and Rotterdam. They all live from imports from China. But it's obvious that the countries that profit from Chinese goods are worried about the competition when the southern route is finished. 
And when goods can also be imported through the Greek port of Piraeus, via Serbia or Italy. That's what's upsetting the competition. Not that Chinese investment is dangerous. That's the view shared by the Serbian government, who says it has a friendship of steel with China. Since the start of the coronavirus pandemic in early 2020, cooperation has expanded even more. But despite that, the European Union remains Serbia's biggest financial backer. Serbia is on the fence, trying to maximize its gains from both sides. When Chinese aid arrived in Serbia during the pandemic, Beijing put on as much political spin as possible. Between the lines, the message was clear. China's success in combating the virus reflected the strengths of the Chinese system. What it failed to mention was that the EU had paid to transport the aid from China to Serbia. As always, our government's emphasis was on the Chinese aid. They really went overboard. And the aid from the European Union only got mentioned in passing. And I reckon that only happened because of public pressure, and pressure from the EU itself. Fifty kilometers from Belgrade, the Belgrade-Budapest line passes close by a nature conservation area. Environmentalist Marko Ljubicic is a regular visitor to the wetlands, where he comes to spot species of rare birds. Wetlands are important for many reasons. One of the reasons is accum accumulation of the water, because you know that Danube is making uh, all, all around the earth, uh, his uh, level of water is changing. So if wetlands did not exist, when Danube gets higher, it will, could make uh, big problems for the local cities and villages that are near the Danube. Ljubicic works for the Garani Nature Conservation Group on the banks of the Danube. He takes local kids on excursions to the wetlands to teach them about biological diversity and the importance of nature. He's worried about what the railway line's construction will mean for the area. A lot of swamps and a lot of wetland will be destroyed by putting ground and sand for construction of the, the railway station. And all the birds and uh, living uh, living structure and, and uh, plants who are there will need to find some other place where they can live. And that's the biggest ecological problem that the railway station makes. Marko Lubicic lives and works in Sremski Kalovci, a town of around 8,000 right on the Danube River. but soon the town will be separated from the river by the track. Then people will have to take an underpass to reach the Danube. Several locals started a petition, but they couldn't influence the planning that was already underway for the railway line. The plans had been signed off on without any local input or democratic participation process. The trains probably will be better, the railway be, will be better, but to be honest, I don't see the, the full potential of, of construction it for the local people. Sensky Kalotsi will have nothing for it. The metastasis had already spread. It happened very quickly. We went to the doctor together 
She told us my father should stay in hospital overnight so that they could examine the findings. When I came back the next morning, I could already see he wasn't doing well at all. He died just 30 days later, because metastatic cancer spreads really fast and gets into the bloodstream really fast. Goran Stoyak lost his father to lung cancer in 2016. If you talk to people in Tusla, you'll hear similar stories over and over again. For a long time, Goran Stoyak thought he and his family were the exception. We were surprised because we thought it was a mistake. He never had any complaints, he was never sick. We were shocked. But we knew what was happening with the neighbors. You could hear them groaning and gasping for air. It's one of the most horrible diseases there is. You have to fight to breathe. <laughs> It's All Saints Day, and people are mourning their dead. Few cities in Europe have worse air quality than the Bosnian city of Tuzla. During the winter months especially, particulate matter and sulfur dioxide levels exceed EU limits for weeks at a time. The poor air quality is making people sick but only a few actually complain about it. Goran Stoyak says his father's death was a wake-up call. There's nothing nice here. Someone is always sick. Everyone is being gradually poisoned and dying out. Only a few people here die a natural death. 90% of people die of cancer, and almost all of them die before their time. Wherever in their body they're most vulnerable, that's where the cancer attacks. Tuzla's air pollution is produced by vehicle and industrial emissions, old residential heating systems, and decrepit coal-fired power plants. The bottom line is, coal power is the problem. 60% of Bosnia's total energy is still produced from coal. And there are no plans to change that anytime soon. A new coal-fired power plant is being built, with help from Chinese loans. Now we are in front of the actual construction site for the future Block 7 of uh, thermal power plant Tuzla. On the right side you can actually see the old one, which is here since 1964, roughly. And uh, they claim that the new one is going to replace the old, well, Blocks 3 and 4, and probably 5. So. Uh, we see the trucks working on there, so this is, as they call it, the preparatory phase, which is done by the local companies, and uh, they're actually preparing the construction site for the Chinese workers. Denis Zhishko has campaigned against pollution here for years. Bosnia-Herzegovina's continued reliance on coal angers him, as does the deal with the Chinese. All it means for Bosnians is more bad air. The new Block 7 of Tuzla's power plant is being funded largely by money from China. China's Exim Bank has put up more than 600 million euros in loans to the Bosnian state. I know for a fact that this is something which is going to cost the people of Bosnia and Herzegovina a lot of money and a lot of lost uh, years of life because if they build it, it will continue to work for another 40 years and continue to pollute for another 40 years. While the European Commission pushes ahead with its phase-out of coal power, would-be EU member Bosnia-Herzegovina isn't giving up. Welcome news for China, which is also using the new Silk Road project to advance its supposedly clean coal technology. China says the Tuzla 7 block will meet all EU standards, 
In Tuzla, the deal with China is being hailed as a success. The power plant is the biggest employer here by far. In the negotiations and preparatory phase of this deal, the Chinese showed a high level of professionalism. Block 7 isn't their first project. They've been present in Serbia for a long time. The Chinese, who we were involved with, knew our culture and our country. They were familiar with the economic and social situation here. They assured us that they would be able to carry out these projects, and they had references. It might look inviting, but these waters are awash with highly toxic chemicals. They're the waste product of the power plant a few kilometers away. The waste is disposed of in the surrounding environment and left to seep into the groundwater. Denis Zhishko and his team have complained for years that there are no environmental standards when it comes to getting rid of the waste produced by the power plant. That's also the case for the new Chinese block under construction. Uh, it's basically killing people and nature. I mean, that, that's the shortest explanation you can get. There are no proper prevention measures for this uh, to prevent this pollution to spread around in the area. There are no liners to prevent this water to penetrate and poison the underground water. There are no prevention measures once the surface dries out in, in summer. The wind just picks up the dust and, and takes it even to the center of town. Zhishko is angry that the Bosnian government signed the deal with the Chinese. He doesn't hold the Chinese investors responsible though. He sees his own government as largely to blame. There is a market. Our politicians are interested in, in doing, building coal power plants, and China is the only one providing, willing to give loans for such projects. When we had meetings in the Chinese embassy, let's say five, six years ago, uh, when we asked the same question, why, why are you providing loans for coal? and not for renewables, for wind, for solar, for whatever, because they produce everything. And the answer was very simple. It's your authorities which are asking us loans for this type of technology. If they ask for wind or if they ask for, for, for uh, solar, we would be more than happy to provide that also. Denis Zhishko has invited politicians, energy policy experts, and concerned citizens to a roundtable meeting near the power plant this evening. The big question, how should the surrounding towns and cities deal with the power plant waste, the ash, the dust, for the next 40 years? The green oases between Tuzla and the town of Lukvats are terribly polluted by industry, but also by private households with their own heating systems, and by traffic emissions. We just shouldn't be destroying even more nature in our region by turning it into a dumping site for ash. Residents here are no longer willing to accept the waste on their doorsteps. Goran Stoyak also hopes to raise the pressure on the politicians and force them to take action. I understand people who work in the energy sector. Their whole business model rests on Block 7 being built now. And undoing all of that now, that wouldn't be easy. Even so, Denis Zhishko has managed to get the issue onto the agenda. And the local politicians have agreed to try to find a different disposal site for the power plant waste a site far enough away to spare Tuzla. Adin Delic is the mayor of Lukovac, the town right next to Tuzla. It's election campaign time, and Delic and his supporters are cleaning near the river. 
The politician <laughs> says the new Tesla Box 7 guarantees no one need worry they'll have to go without energy. Our economy, as it is now, is very much depends from energy sector. So right now we have existing thermal power plant which will stop in the next five years. So in, in order to, to ensure a continuation of energy, we need to replace these old blocks with Block 7. And what, what is also significant to consider, investing and building of Block 7 will rapidly increase environmental situation in this area, even with same level of energy produced. The argument is that a modern coal-fired power plant will help protect the environment. And the shift away from coal to renewables is just not affordable at the moment. For Bosnia-Herzegovina, one of Europe's poorest countries, investment from China means opportunities. If you don't mind, I will be very open and very direct. We are thankful to everybody who support or invest here. It doesn't matter if it's from China, from Turkey or any other country. And I'm sure most people will be even more happy if European community come with some other solution better than uh, than China or any other country. Goran Stoyak lives with his family in Bukinia district, not far from the power plant. Right behind his house is an old ash dump. There used to be 500 residents here. Now there are only 100. His are the only children. He'd like to see Bosnia phase out coal power more quickly. Our problem is that we're surrounded by waste disposal dumps. We live between two coal ash dumps and a thermal power plant. We're hoping for change in the government so that the West can have some influence. Clearly, at the moment, the government is only acting in its own interests and doesn't care about the people here. The rail corridor that begins at the Greek port of Piraeus and travels via Belgrade is meant to end one day in Budapest. It will become the delivery route for many Chinese goods coming to the EU. Hungary's close ties with China go back decades. We've come to meet Gerge Shalat, an expert on China and its policies. He's taking us through Budapest's Chinatown. From here, Chinese goods go on to be distributed around Europe. It's, it all started in 1989. Uh, we were still a socialist country, and for some reason, Hungary and China uh, reached an agreement about uh, not requiring visas from each other. In 1989, after the Tiananmen Square uh, massacre, uh, actually not the political refugees, but uh, uh, many small businessmen left the country and they looked at the map, uh, they, they tried to find a country uh, that uh, they, they could reach easily and uh, they found out that Hungary didn't require a visa uh, from them, so about 50,000 uh, Chinese uh, small businessmen came to Hungary very suddenly. Of these 50,000, around 30,000 remain today. Since Hungary became the first Eastern European country to officially sign up to the new Silk Road initiative in 2011, their numbers have grown further. But traditionally, the Chinese population here keeps to itself. Jin Shi's family story is a typical one. 30 years ago, his parents came to Hungary on business but he grew up back in China. 10 years ago, he came here himself to work. My parents don't live here anymore, but some of my other relatives do. When I left school and was looking for a job, I realized that opportunities outside China were a lot better. Some of my relatives were already in Hungary, and so I came here to help them. Shen Shi feels at home here. The Hungarians have been very open toward him, also an important factor. And business is good. As a member of the EU, Hungary offers easy access to the rest of Europe. 
How much of that business might involve illegal dealings, no one knows for certain. I believe the fact that the government is quite friendly to the Chinese immigrants, this whole policy toward China and Chinese uh, people in Hungary uh, reflects uh, Orban's uh, desire to uh, uh, have much more uh, close uh, relations uh, with uh, China. And it's quite strange that the uh, uh, Hungarian government is quite unfriendly to immigrants, uh, but uh, uh, in, in Hungarian public discourse, Chinese people living here, they do not count as immigrants. Indeed, Viktor Orban rarely passes up an opportunity to publicly woo his Chinese partners. It's no accident that it also sends a message to the EU. Hungary has its sights set on the east. To develop this region, we need external technologies and financial help. European money alone is no longer enough. So we welcome, as a sign of the new world order, that China is looking to this region as a place to get involved in development. Under this new world order, Hungary has decided to profit from China as much as it can. And that despite the fact that most of the money flowing into the country comes from the EU. Gerges Shalat works for Hungary's Institute for Foreign Affairs and Trade which also produces analyses for the foreign ministry. I don't think that this is only the Hungarian government. Maybe the Hungarian government is the loudest in the region, but the uh, whole of Central and Eastern Europe turned uh, toward uh, China about uh, 10 years ago. And uh, we became uh, too dependent on the West. In turning to the East, uh, uh, these uh, countries tried to get some uh, more room to maneuver, and they uh, trying to, uh, to decrease their over-dependency on the West. The railway line that the Chinese engineers are already working on in Belgrade will one day end in Budapest. Though the project is much vaunted by the Hungarian government, construction still hasn't begun. Bernadette Zale has been a member of the Hungarian parliament since 2012. She's a vocal critic of Prime Minister Orban and his government. Her chief concern is the rule of law in her country and the increasing pivot towards an autocratic China. It's very clear that we, uh, we want to live in a liberal model, a liberal democracy here in Hungary. Orban doesn't. He needs, he wants to go the liberal way. And uh, the Chinese, what I can see, they do not really see or, or they don't really ask any questions uh, about liberal democracy values uh, or they do not have any expectations uh, about the democratic values. Uh, the European ties, they do have. The EU Commission has sharply criticized the rail project, not least because it initially lacked the public tender required under EU rules. Hungary finally addressed concerns by giving the project to a joint Hungarian-Chinese venture. Work on the route is estimated to cost 1.8 billion euros. 85% is loans from China. A flagship of our joint projects is the modernization of the Belgrade-Budapest railway line, which is going to be of strategic importance for transportation on the new Silk Road. The Hungarian nation doesn't need this investment. Uh, we, doesn't need, uh, we don't need the railway from Budapest to Belgrade at all. We would need this money to the Hungarian already existing uh, railway system because it's in a very bad shape. So the situation is even worse because we are worse off with this uh, investment. Um, the Chinese loan is pretty big for the Hungarians and we will never uh, get to the end uh, of paying it back. Not far from central Budapest, Ferenc Baros will eventually be the final station on the Belgrade-Budapest line. 
It's the only new Silk Road project that 